Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Today's episode is going to look a little bit different. Over the last two weeks, I've been configuring my train area into a live streaming setup. In this video, I will be focusing on the software and how I have it set up if I was going to do this as a live stream. Welcome to Humanity Junction, where the city intersects with humans. OBS is the main software program that I'm using for streaming that will manage the audio and video switching. I am using a 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It is free and open source software for video recording and live streaming on Windows, Mac, and Linux. I chose OBS for its flexibility and available plugins. I'm still tweaking the setup, but I have a good base to work with. Let's take a look at my OBS setup. Each of my main scenes, which you can see here above the line as I click through them, were made up of all of these scenes below the line. OBS allows you to nest scenes within scenes. One example of this is the lower thirds ticker that I made for displaying the artists and titles of the background music. I created the background music element as its own scene so that I could insert it into every main scene and only need to update it in one spot. Pretzel is the service that I'm using for music. Pretzel provides DMCA safe music for YouTube and Twitch. There is a YouTube safe mode that will only play music that is set up with YouTube's content ID system. This will theoretically prevent DMCA takedown requests for copyright violations. The Pretzel desktop app also will write the artist and song name to a text file which I am then able to feed into OBS for my lower thirds. Here is just a quick step through of some of my other various scenes. We have a starting soon scene. We have a one camera scene where I am the main focus of it and then I have the YouTube chat on the side. I have a switched camera feed which has an overhead camera look as well as through a inexpensive HDMI switcher, I also have a side shot. I have a be right back scene, as well as a scene where I have various window, window capture sources set up. While OBS is the backbone of the system, UpDeck is the control interface that I am using. UpDeck is an app that I run on both my iPad and on the computer that allows me to press a button and trigger various effects within OBS. While OBS does allow you to set up hotkeys, UpDeck allows you to script more complicated actions. One example is on my show start scene where it also generates the countdown timer. I currently have everything set up on two pages, but UpDeck does allow for 25 pages with 20 buttons on each page, so you have a lot of different options. On the top left, I have buttons set up to mute and unmute the various audio inputs. The bus buttons are set up as toggles, so they are green when live and red when muted. For the music toggle, I also have the button show and hide the lower thirds. On the top right, I have some additional buttons related to audio. UpDeck allows you to import a folder with sound effects and then directly trigger them through UpDeck. I currently have three sound effects set up. A ship bell, slide whistle going down, and a slide whistle going up. I also created some buttons that make adjustments to the scenes. One button will show or hide the face camera and then I do have another button that'll also show or hide the YouTube chat. I also have buttons set up to show and hide different window capture sources so that I can toggle through them for the different sources that I've set up previously.
As mentioned earlier, the countdown timer is scripted in Updeck. I could have brought in a countdown timer from Stream Elements or made my own countdown video, but having the timer scripted in Updeck allows me the ability to adjust the time on the fly or even just hide the timer if needed. When I press the show start scene, it also triggers the countdown timer to start. But if I need to make adjustments, I can go to the second page of buttons and on the top row, I can increase or decrease by five seconds or even just hide the countdown. Back on the first page is where I was triggering all of my various scenes. I am working in studio mode. So the highlighted scene comes up on the left. And then when I hit the crossfade button, it transfers into the next scene. In addition to the button pages, Updeck also comes pre-built with a page for starting and stopping your recording or streaming, as well as an audio page, which is allows you to adjust the levels. I'm not usually a programmer. So configuring Updeck was definitely the hardest part of this setup for me. But Updeck provides really good documentation, and once you understand the syntax, it's pretty straightforward. This was a really fun project to tackle. I started without any knowledge of live streaming and ended up with a system that I would feel comfortable using if I did decide to stream. Although this type of video is not the main focus of this channel, I hope you found this diversion interesting. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe and select the bell icon to receive notifications. Thanks again and have a great day.